Hello everyone, and welcome to some analysis of the F1 2020 performance update. So this update then dropped just today, and uh, I've been spending quite a few hours today, to be honest, extracting all I can from the game files. So every little change they've made to each of the teams, I've been extracting those out into a spreadsheet, um, and we're going to look through some of those today. Now, it is going to be a very data-heavy video. That is because I put it on a spreadsheet, as I said, that's the best way to do it because that means that while I talk to you guys, I can be manipulating the data and I can show you exactly what I need to show you when I need to show you it. Um, and of course, also, that is better than just showing the raw the raw files with, with all the stuff in it. So anyway, guys, let's get into it. So here we go then guys, jumping straight in with some analysis. So first one here is on the power unit, the engine performance relative for each team. So let me show you what we're looking at here first and foremost. So you've got the constructors on the left hand side. This is the standings in the 2020 constructors standings, broken down by engine manufacturer of course, by the lead engine manufacturer. Next we've got the engine, Mercedes, Honda, Renault, Ferrari. Then you've got the peak internal combustion engine power. Now this is in kilowatts. This is the absolute peak power it generates throughout the rev range. Of course, it does you know, vary the amount of power it generates throughout the rev range, but that is the absolute min uh, sorry maximum power that it can generate. Quali mode is basically uh, a multiplier for that power in terms of what you can get in quali. I'll go through that bit in a bit more detail in a moment. Fuel consumption is just obviously how much fuel it consumes. Um, I'm not sure what the numbers are. We'll go through that in a moment. Um, and I will say as well, guys, any variables that are missing here, so any, any that I've not listed here, they are exactly the same throughout the engine manufacturers. Now that goes down to... Um, your ERS, so that's exactly identical across Honda, Mercedes, across all the tiers, exactly identical. Um, the I think the mass of the engine might actually be slightly different, but it doesn't actually make a difference in the game. Um, so everything else you see here is absolutely identical, including the wear, interestingly. The reliability slash the wear, same thing, um, of the engine is exactly the same ac across the engine. So these, are the, these three variables are the only things that are different, which is really interesting. One final note on the engines before I move on. I will say as well, I have simplified the fuel consumption numbers. Um, it, it's quite complicated. Obviously, the numbers complicated in itself but um, there is a minimum and maximum number so I presume that sort of minimum fuel burn maximum fuel burn based on you know various variables going on um, so I've just sort of averaged that to give you a nice simplified or <laughs> as simplified as it gets as a 5.6 E-05 so here we go then so let's jump straight in with looking just at the Mercedes team for now so we've got the new team and the old team here um, We've got the peak power, of course, they, that hasn't changed. Mercedes has not been changed at all. Peak power is 596 kilowatts. That's around 800 horsepower or so. Um, before and after here, so that is before the update upgrades and then after you upgrade. So that is if you're running a career mode, of course, when you upgrade, upgrade your car, you get more, um, obviously, power out the engine as you go through, as you upgrade your engine. So it starts at 596 kilowatts, ends up at 671. Quality mode, so I mentioned this previously, This that's a multiplier for your internal combustion engine power. So 1.08 in Mercedes you get. So, for example, if you've got no updates you go 596 kilowatts times that by 1.08 so that's eight percent increase in power for quali um, and that is your quali power we'll, we'll run through that while that's been important in, a, in just a moment we go through some more teams fuel consumption this is just a tiny tiny number 5.60 um, works out as 0 0.0000 something um, so that's just a way of representing it so 5.6 so you know that's kind of a baseline and then after your upgrades you get 4.35 now let's go through the different teams so honda of course has not changed that's a slightly lower performance numbers for Honda there um, but it hasn't changed Renault hasn't changed Ferrari of course is the one that has changed now interestingly in F1 2020 there is actually two tiers of engine so if we compare Mercedes and Honda here because there is only two tiers there's a upper tier and a lower tier now previously Ferrari win the upper tier they've been moved to the lower tier so that's why it's interesting so previously it was Mercedes and Ferraris in the upper tier and it was Renault and uh, Honda in the lower tier um, both tiers, of course, had the same performance, but now Ferrari have been demoted to that lower tier, so it's actually Mercedes that have got the upper tier power. Now, if we can prepare here the Mercedes and the Honda, you can see what I mean. So, 596 kilowatts, uh, the Mercedes generates, uh, the upper tier generates, the lower tier generates 581. So, that's a fairly significant chunk of power, but actually, after you've applied your updates in career mode, you can see 671, everyone generates the exact same power. Now, this is where quality mode gets interesting because quality mode does not change with updates. So even if you've got a fully upgraded car, your Mercedes engined car would be generating very slightly more power, 1% more power in quality because you still got that 1.08% or 8% boost in quality, only a 7% boost boost for the, the, the lower tier. Um, fuel consumption, again, similar sort here, 5.6, whatever you want to call it. Fuel consumption, I don't know what the exact number means. They're 5.71, so a bit more. Once you're upgraded, again, interestingly, a fully upgraded Honda engine or a fully upgraded tier 2 engine 
actually could still consumes more power than a fully upgraded tier one engine. So if you want the absolute maximum performance in career mode, guys, definitely go for an upper tier engine, which is now only Mercedes, because if we go down to Ferrari here, we can see that actually they've been demoted. They've been demoted down. So of course, now look, if you compare the, uh, or I guess the current Renault engine to the new Ferrari engine, that all these numbers are exactly identical. So basically all they've done is they've moved them down to the lower tier I presume they use two tiers just to make it a bit easier for development, you know, less testing, um, less variables required. They're just having two tiers. And actually, it was pretty good before. I think Mercedes and Ferrari were more or less on a par and Honda and Renault were more or less on a par. I think now that things have changed, you know, it's hard to know where Ferrari stands, isn't it? I think perhaps it's, it's a little bit too simple now for, for, for these... So I guess the three engine manufacturers to be in the same tier. Perhaps that's a bit too simplified now. But anyway, that is what they've done. So quite a simple change, really, because, you know, they already had these variables running in both Renault and Honda. So they just demoted Ferrari to the exact same variables. That probably needed virtually no testing because it's, you know, all the same variables. But yeah, guys, that is the engine manufacturer. And so that is what they've done. They've reduced the Ferrari down to the second tier in F1 2020. Moving on now then to the team comparison. Now let's just start with the old teams as in the way it was before the update. Um, so again, once again here we, on the left, we've got a list of the constructors. That's the current 2020 standings as I make this video. We have got a rank, we'll go through that in a moment. That is a, a ranking that system that I've made to show uh, where that actual performance is in the game. That's a good comparison there against constructors. Of course, the team name, team color, uh, which engine they're running. We're not really gonna touch too much on their engines. We've already done that. Um, so this is the weight. Again, we've got a before and after here. That's for your career mode upgrade, upgrades. Um, obviously, that's just the weight of the car. That includes the driver. Uh, minimum in F1 2020 is 740 kilos, hence some of the teams are on that. Um, drag, again, you know, lower is, lower is better for the drag. Um, again, I don't know exactly what this number means. It's just sort of some sort of coefficient number. And again, I've had to produce this number uh, based on sort of a couple of variables that they use in the back end. That's sort of an average of the numbers that it gives. Um, same really with the front downforce. The only difference there being higher is better. Again, I've had to produce this number based on, um, you know, lots and lots of variables going on in the back end. So, you know, there has been quite a lot of data work on this. So if you do enjoy this video, please do subscribe, guys. It does really help a channel of my size, as I always say. So anyway, going back to the rank then. So this is an interesting one. Basically, I ranked each team on each of the four categories you see here. So I've ranked them on weight, I've ranked them on drag, I've ranked them on front downforce, and I've ranked them on rear downforce. Now that is before any upgrades are applied. I've then averaged those four ranks, and then I've ranked that average. So that's how you've got to that rank number there. I can show you the numbers if you'd like to see them. There they are, all messy numbers. Let's hide those again because they're a bit messy. But yeah, you can see the old team rankings. And this is before the performance patch is what I mean by old. Um, the top two are about right. Interestingly, actually, the Red Bull is a better car than the Mercedes in F1 2020. Now, as you can see, if you compare these two numbers, it is down purely to having slightly less drag, very, very slightly less drag. And actually, downforce numbers here, they're absolutely identical, which I find interesting. Um, so technically, the Red Bull beats the Mercedes, but of course, the Mercedes, having the Mercedes engine is still a better car overall. Um, this rank, I should say, does exclude the power unit stuff completely. It, it's purely in terms of chassis. That is the only thing um, that this rank includes. So now here's what gets interesting because Racing Point are currently third in the constructors, yet they were ranked the seventh best team or the best chassis, I should say, in F1 2020. Again, boosted up by having that Mercedes engine. Um, McLaren are fourth in the structures. They were ranked fifth best chassis in the game. Uh, fifth constructor is Renault and they were ranked fourth in the games. That's loosely right. Now, Ferrari, of course, is one of the ones that one of the movers. They are ranked, currently ranked sixth in the constructors. They were actually the third, comfortably the third best team. Very, very close up behind Red Bull in terms of chassis. But again, with the better engine, probably were, were, were right up there, if not a bit quicker than Red Bull in the game. Uh, Alfa Tori is seventh for the constructors, but sixth in the game. And we're not going to do through the rest of those. You can see they are absolutely right. So the ones that they've changed then, interestingly, they've changed the Renault, they've changed the Alfa Romeo, They've changed the Haas and they've changed the racing points. So that's the four teams they've changed. And looking at this, this rank comparison, that is more or less right. Of course, the Alfa Romeo and Haas were the correct ranking, but they've just basically increased their performance. So uh, actually, no, they haven't. That's completely right. They've decreased their performance, which we'll get into in just a moment. So I'm just going to quickly show you the new rankings then before we look at a direct back-to-back -back comparison. You can see here, they've pretty much fixed the rankings. We've got, you know, more or less the same there. Third, third, fourth, fourth, fifth, fifth. Sixth and fifth and sixth, near enough, so that that's but actually, though, no, that is correct. That's because they, these these two cars have come out absolutely identical in the rankings, they both got fifth place, seventh, seventh, eighth, and ninth, for you know, more or less there, and then tenth for tenth. So, that is, of course, the aim of their update is to get the, the rank to real world correct. And, and you know, looking at, looking at it there compared to the constructors, they've got it pretty much spot on. So, jumping in then to some comparisons. 
So we've got each team. Mercedes have not changed at all. I'll go into the... Actually, before I compare, I'll go into the numbers first. So 740 kilos is the absolute minimum weight you can be in F1 2020. But interestingly, you actually break, break the rules when you update your career car. So 740 is the minimum weight, including driver. You can actually go down to 722 kilos in career mode, which is interesting. Um, drag, again, lower is better on this number. So Mercedes, you go down to below one. Again, I don't really know what that number means. That's just the, the numbers you get there. Uh, downforce increases and you know, front and rear downforce increases there. There. So let's look at it then. So Mercedes actually haven't changed at all. Mercedes is exactly the same as before the patch. So both engine and uh, team performance haven't changed at all. Red Bull, same, haven't changed at all. Their, their engine and their team is exactly the same. Racing Point is one of the teams that has changed. So we've got the new team here uh, above, if I can get it right, new team above, old team below. So they've actually reduced the weight very slightly, well, quite significantly, actually. Four kilos is not an insignificant amount of weight in, in a Formula One car, um, considering they only weigh 742 kilos to begin with. So they've reduced the weight by about four kilos. Um, but again, they, you always end on the exact same weight after the updates. All cars look end on 722. So that is perfectly even once you've applied all your updates drag they've actually reduced the drag very slightly again not a huge change here gone from 6.6 six to 6.0 six to begin with um, front downforce they have gone from 1.9 to 2 so again they've increased the front downforce and they've increased the rear downforce so basically racing point have had an update there uh, McLaren hasn't changed at all all these numbers are exactly the same Renault hasn't changed at all all these numbers are exactly the same Ferrari has changed as we know so the weight they're all on the minimum weight of course Ferrari haven't got a heavier car this year you know they're not going to be above the the minimum weight threshold that you know they have got a worse car but it's not going to be a heavier car um, drag they have increased the drag really quite significantly which I find interesting that is realistic I would say of course I you know I, I should say as well at this point of course I, these are all from the game files I don't have any kind of insider information on either teams or, or, or Codemasters but they've quite significantly increased the drag on the Ferrari which is probably fair um, they have slightly uh, reduced the downforce they've got and they've slightly reduced uh, the rear downforce that they've got so that's an interesting change there Alpha Tori hasn't changed at all Alpha Romeo has changed now I mentioned previously that they've reduced their performance slightly um, that's because they've increased their drag again quite significantly there look they've gone from 4-0 to 8-1 so that's quite a quite a big change there uh, downforce they've slightly decreased their downforce um, so that's just going to cost them performance Haas as well similar sort of change at Haas really um, interestingly actually they haven't changed the weight of the Alpha Romeo Haas they have changed the weight they've lost four kilos of weight on the uh, Haas they've also so made it a bit less draggy interestingly so it should be slightly quicker in a straight line um, and but they have actually kept the downforce exactly the same so they've actually increased the performance of the Haas of course this is just the chassis so they've actually increased the performance of the chassis but decreased the performance of the engine so overall Haas have clearly lost a bit of pace going into Codemasters but actually they made the chassis slightly better which is interesting and of course Williams has not changed at all now, here's where it gets interesting. Let's start ranking the teams by each individual variable. So if we, for example, order them by weight, we can see the order uh, there. So unsurprised, we've got Mercedes, Red Bull, Ferrari on top, racing with just behind, Renault, etc., etc. I'll let you draw your own conclusions there. So the weight there going up to 753 kilos. Uh, so that's pretty much of a four much ranking there, isn't it, in terms of weight. Of course, Ferrari perhaps the only one that's, that's really out of position. And, and uh, yeah, I'd say that's about right at the moment. Um, drag, let's rank them by drag. So actually, the Renault is least draggy car. Followed by the Alpha Tori, then McLaren, then Red Bull, then Mercedes. So according to Codemaster, Mercedes have got the fifth draggiest car. Um, then into the race point, Alfa Romeo, Haas, Ferrari, Williams. No real huge surprises there. That's probably, I would say, if you were to sit down with, you know, with a, with a pen and pencil or, or a pen and paper rather than pen and pencil, you're not going to get very far with just those two. Um, that's probably the order you, you put them in. So I would say they've got it pretty much right now. Um, let's hold it by front downforce now. Um, I would say, we'll say that rear downforce and front downforce have exactly the same uh, order as you can see there. So this is just downforce really rather than kind of front and rear. Um, so Williams, uh, actually we need to order it the other way, don't we? So Red Bull have got the top, the most downforce. Uh, but actually exactly the same as Mercedes, so they aren't actually any different there. Racing Point, interesting now, have got the third best downforce in F1 2020. Um, McLaren, just a little way behind. Ferrari, pretty much, in uh, fact, Ferrari got the exact same downforce now as McLaren. Look, uh, Renault, just a little bit behind there. Uh, Alfa Tori, again, a little bit back. Haas, Alfa Romeo, Williams. So all pretty much as you'd expect, although Racing Point... I guess if they've sort of got lashes, Mercedes, haven't they? So they probably have got that amount of downforce. Um, you know, it's hard to know, isn't it, without having seen the team's figures exactly how correct all these figures are. But I find it really interesting there just to rank them by each individual thing, just to see how good each team was now. 
Now, I will say once again, with these variables, I've only included the ones that are actually different from each team. Every single other variable that I've not included here is the same. Obviously, that there is some minor difference one that I've not included because they don't affect performance. Obviously, you know, the shaping of the car is a little bit different and, and you know, there's a few other very, very minor differences. Um, but performance wise, these are the only things that make a difference. So they've all got identical uh, tire grip of course tire wear is a little bit different between the cars but i actually don't have access to that information interestingly that is locked within the database of the game um but yeah all got exactly the same uh tire grip not not necessarily tire wear uh, all got the exact same gear ratios uh exact same suspension performance so i found that really interesting is the only variables they've changed are weight drag front down force rear down force now i assume that's for simplification purposes so you know it means they can really easily adapt and, and bring us these performance updates because they've there's, a, there's less variables to do of course they still have to do a lot of testing when they change all these variables so um, but I, I imagine the simpler the better of course there is also more variables in the database but these are all the car performance variables as i said there is a couple of variables that are hidden within the database tire wear is the only one i can think of i'm sure there's probably a couple more but of course you know the weight the drag the front down force the rear down force they're the things that are really, really going to affect the performance of the car. Um, you know, anything else in the database is going to have a smaller effect. So there we go, guys. That is your new performance ranking for the F1 2020 October performance update. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Please do subscribe if you're new. This video did take me quite a few hours to assemble all of these numbers and get them to a spreadsheet, make them presentable and, and all this sort of thing. So it, it is quite a long video, this one. Hence, it's quite a late upload. It's uh, already quarter past 10 as I'm just recording this commentary. So it has been a bit of a late one. So please do subscribe if you did enjoy this video. Drop a like as well if you like this sort of video because, you know, I have got access to quite a few more variables within the game that, of course, I use to create all of my mods. Um, so, you know, I can do any of these sort of videos that you want me to do in the future i can do you know break down some analysis of exactly uh you know how some of it works perhaps if you want to see that but anyway guys that is your new uh, ranking in f1 2020 hope you enjoyed this video and i'll catch you next time bye bye